Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. An off-duty Los Angeles sheriff's deputy who was shot in the head at a fast food restaurant dies. The move the suspect allegedly made that helped police catch him. As the sun rises this morning, searchers will again be out on Lake Isabella trying to find a boater who went missing four days ago. He's worked behind the scenes for decades, but you might not know his face. We bet you'll recognize his voice, though. Tabitha continues her series this morning of people whose work has shaped the Golden Empire. But you probably have never seen them on this Thursday, June 13th, 2019. Good morning. Great to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Tabitha Mills. In for Alex Fisher and Kevin Charette. I look forward to this story. I didn't know you were doing it. And uh, that is a great man right there. He is a great man, and he helps us a lot around here. But like we've been saying, people might not know who he is. So I'm glad we get to introduce him to everyone. If you have a closet with lots of hats, that's Bucky because he wears (laughs) lots of hats. Yes, he does. Yeah. So we'll get to that. We need a uh, hat for shade today. uh, Yes, but not uh, as bad as yesterday. We really cranked it up yesterday. The hottest day of the year so far. Oh, yuck. Do you know how hot it was? It was hot. 107? Yeah, let's get right right to it. We'll Let's see. Yes, it was hot and we hit 108 degrees oh. yesterday, Oof. close to the record of 110 set back in 1979. So it was definitely a hot one. Not so hot today. So that'll be a good thing. We're starting out warm, 79 degrees right now. We have a light wind out of the east northeast at 7. We'll start out in the 70s and this afternoon we'll be in the upper 90s. So that is some good news. And then for the mountains, starting out near 61, a west-northwest wind at 3 miles per hour right now. We'll start out in the 60s and then lower 80s expected this afternoon. I do expect it to be fairly breezy and that's why we have a wind advisory in place as well. We begin with breaking news this morning out of London. The UK signed an extradition request for WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange who faces charges in the US under the Espionage Act. While the UK Home Secretary has signed the request, the courts have the ultimate decision. The US is set to lay out all charges against Assange in a London court tomorrow. Prosecutors initially charged him with a single count of computer intrusion, but last month they added new 17 new counts, including controversial charges under the Espionage Act for encouraging, receiving, and publishing national defense information in concert with former Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning. As the Father's Day holiday weekend approaches, crews are still trying to find a boater who went missing in Lake Isabella four days ago. A 36-year-old Los Angeles man disappeared Sunday afternoon after he reportedly jumped from his boat to swim to shore, but he never surfaced. It happened near the French Gulch Marina. Several local agencies are looking for him in addition to the Tulare County Sheriff's Office. Meanwhile, tomorrow marks one month since McFarland City Manager John Wooner disappeared. BPD is investigating his disappearance, calling it out of character and making the situation suspicious. While the McFarland City Council continues to express concern for Wooner, it's taken steps to make sure the city can still function in his absence. Last week, the city appointed David Tooley to serve as interim city manager. He began work in his new post Monday. The McFarland City Council is set to meet at 6 o'clock tonight in the council chambers on West Sherwood Avenue. A grocery giant's apologizing after a local store kept serving customers while there was a dead body inside. The Kern County Sheriff's Office says a man died at the Albertsons in Taft Tuesday morning, but several people contacted us saying the store stayed open for business. In a statement, Albertsons apologized for how the death was handled and is investigating. A company representative said, quote, while this is not something that happens often, we will make sure that such a, sh- a should such a circumstance happen again, it will be handled with the compassion, respect, and sensitivity it deserves. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department's mourning the loss of one of its own. An off-duty deputy who was shot in the head Monday has died. Deputy Joseph Solano wasn't in uniform or on duty when a man walked into a fast food restaurant and opened fire on him. Doctors at USC Medical Center worked to save Solano, but he died late yesterday. A van carried his body from the hospital to the coroner's office. L.A. County Sheriff joined Solano's family in walking behind the van with dozens of deputies followed close by. Solano worked for the Sheriff's Department for the past 13 years. Investigators don't believe the shooting was related to his job. Deputy Solano did what we can expect every deputy to do. He confronted a threat, not knowing what it was, and 
In a split second, he lost his life. The man suspected of shooting Solano confessed to his father, allegedly, who in turn notified police. Officers arrested 30-year-old Rhett Nelson Tuesday. He's being held on $2 million bail. It's 5.06 now, and it's something that continues to be an issue for students here in Bakersfield and across the state, struggling to find stable housing. State lawmakers are working to tackle student homelessness. A proposed bill would provide funding for homeless coordinator positions in the Department of Education. It would also create new regional assistance centers for communities that need extra help. This map shows students' homelessness is in the hot spots in California. State Superintendent Tony Thurman says there are 200,000 homeless children statewide, but adds it's likely that number is even higher. And that's unacceptable. And these are kids that are living in cars, motels, um, or crowded up in a garage. Governor Newsom and lawmakers have agreed to spend about a billion dollars on the state's homelessness issue as a whole. Forty million of that is set aside for rapid rehousing for UC and CSU students. And although classes at CSUB may have ended, the need for fresh food hasn't. So the university's food pantry will continue to feed students throughout the summer. Through August 23rd, it will be open from 10 to 2 on Mondays and Wednesdays and 2 to 6 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Any CSUB student can utilize the pantry, not just those enrolled in summer classes. We're in the midst of our first big heat wave this summer, but many people in Kern County can't afford a good fan, not to mention running the AC in this sweltering heat. So once again, we teamed up with the Volunteer Center of Kern County for our annual fan drive. We asked you to swing by our station yesterday to donate fans for seniors and veterans. Many stopped by, including donors from the air-cooled Volkswagen Club. Sun Power by Sun Solar also dropped off a $2,500 check for the Volunteer Center. At last check, more than 500 fans were donated, and we thank you again for all of your generosity and the willingness to give in the spirit of the Golden Empire, because we're known for our heat, and we're known for our generosity, if we're known for anything. And that's County. right. We couldn't do it without everybody and, and all of their generosity, as you said, Maddie. Well, you may know their work, but if they pass you on the street, you may not recognize them. This morning, I continue a series honoring some of the people whose work has shaped our community for the past 40 years. And this morning, we honor a longtime KGET employee whose voice you know, but face you may not. Well, I started here February 12, 1984, and uh, we had just changed networks. We were CBS at the time, we changed to NBC, and uh, we didn't have a newscast at the time, really. We had two people in the newsroom. This year marks 35 years for David Buckner at Channel 17 or Bucky, as he's known to us. We've gone through so many changes in the years, you know. We've gone from, from not having computers in the building. We had typewriters in the newsroom. I mean, it was a noisy place. Uh, we got our first computers here only about 22 years ago. Uh, we were in the old building um, at uh, 28th and I Street. We were, we were there from uh, November of 59. Our 60th anniversary is coming up this year. People don't realize that. We've been on the air for 60 years here at Channel 17. And we moved over here in 1997, and I was involved in the refurbishing of this building. Um, worked long hours, you know, 12 hours a day, seven days a week to put this place together. So I know where all the, the, the bodies are buried in this building. I'm kind of the historian in the place now. KGET wasn't his first stop. He started in radio. And my first paid job was in 1976 at an AM FM station called KLYD. They paid me $2 an hour. Uh, I, I make a little bit more than that now. Now I make $4 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> His golden voice made him a crowd favorite, but he couldn't make a living. So to TV he went. You know, in radio at the time, like I say, I was making $2 an hour. You couldn't make an affordable living. I mean, you couldn't live on that. And so television paid an affordable wage. And so I was able to raise a family, have a home, put my three kids through college. So it's, it's been a great deal for 35 years. For more than three decades, he's worked behind the scenes, helping us deliver your news. Well, his face is behind the scenes. His voice is a different story. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I do so many of them. But, you know, it's like, uh, let's see here. 
Attention homeowners and contractors, stop driving to Los Angeles for quartz or granite cabinetry. Shop Factory Direct right here in Bakersfield and save thousands. So it's like that, you know. You just kind of have to exaggerate things and certain words, you know, that you, you punch up, you know, like, you know, more or thousands or, you know, best or whatever. Bucky is our go-to voiceover actor, providing the oomph and pizzazz for many commercials through the years. When I asked him how he felt, knowing thousands of people know his voice, but they probably don't know his face, in true Bucky form, he said. Oh, I, I think it's great. That's great. I mean, I wouldn't want to do what you do because uh, people know you in public. You go to a restaurant and get bad service, you can't complain. But I can. If you couldn't tell, he's kind of our resident comedian, too. But he went on, in a serious manner, and answered my question like this. You know, it's one of those jobs that some days are really hard and other days are really a lot of fun. So it's like there hasn't been a day in 35 years that I've woke up and said, I can't stand it anymore. I, can't, I don't want to go to work anymore. No, it, it's always great. It's always fun. Bucky, thank you for everything you do for us here. We greatly appreciate you. And tomorrow on 17 News at Sunrise, I'll introduce you to a local musician who I like to call the Jingle Master. He is such a talent. He um, is. And a lot of people, even here, didn't know that about him. So it's kind of cool to be able to share that talent with everybody. It really is. And again, thank you so much, Bucky. Absolutely. Back here at 525 in your business watch, it may be a sign the economy is doing better. The number of foreclosures across the country is declining. Property data company Adam Data Solutions says overall foreclosure activity has dropped 22% from this time last year. 49 states, with Vermont being the exception, all saw annual declines in completed foreclosures. States that still have the highest foreclosure rates include New Jersey, Maryland, Florida, Delaware, and Illinois. Summer's here and so are travel scammers. Consumers are being warned to take extra precautions when booking their travel plans online. Cyber criminals are capitalizing on risky travel booking habits. Cybersecurity company McAfee says that one in five Americans has been scammed or nearly scammed when booking a vacation online. Bargain hunters are most at risk. Nearly a third of them are defrauded after spotting a deal that turned out to be good, too good to be true. Security experts warn to only use verified websites and payment methods when booking your vacation. Well, if you're planning to hit the road this summer, travel experts are predicting there's going to be a huge drop in gas prices. AAA says the national average for a gallon of regular gas is down nearly 20 cents from this year's high last month. It now sits at 272. We've been watching gas prices fall steadily for several weeks now. One analyst says U.S. drivers could be paying less than $2.50 for a gallon in the next few months. He predicts the national average could drop even more to around $2.25. If that happens, he says nearly half of the U.S. gas stations would be selling gas for less than $2 a gallon. And don't expect to pay that at the pump here in California. However, prices are still high. Statewide, the average for a gallon of regular gas is $3.85. In Kern County, it's even higher at $3.92. We're keeping an eye on the lowest gas prices for you here in Bakersfield. You can fill up for $3.36 a gallon in northeast Bakersfield. That's on the on. Uh, that's on the Go Food Store on River Boulevard. To look up gas prices in your neighborhood, head to KGET.com, then click on the traffic section.